It's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. So thanks for joining me today. So this is my take on the astrology for October 2023. Now, what's interesting about this month, of course, is that it's eclipse season again. And so we have two eclipses this month. But on top of that, the ruler of both of these eclipses is Venus. So it's important for us to look at Venus as well, which we will look at. Um, but it's also important for you to look at Venus in your chart as well, as that may be activated at this time too. So we have, talking about Venus, Venus in um, Leo at 28 degrees will be out of shadow this month of October on the 8th of October. So that kind of puts to rest the whole um, saga of uh, the Venus going retrograde in Leo. And so after that, uh, basically, uh, Venus will be staying in Virgo for the rest of the month. And so for the whole month, most of this month, Venus in Virgo will be doing what? She will be collecting information and she'll be sifting and sorting um, important information to pull out what's important, right? Um, Virgo is also about service. It is about our health as well. So this, these, all these subjects may come in to view this month for all of us. Um, but I really saw that, you know, a, a lot of the folks that did break up or just decided to consciously uncouple uh, over the summertime period, this could be a month where you really get the facts straight and get important information lined up uh, in order to move forward, right? because we've got Venus now going direct and out of shadow. Um, okay, so when we look at the first new moon, the new moon in Libra will be an eclipse, a new moon eclipse at 21 Libra and eight minutes. And it will occur on the uh, 15th, uh, the 14th, 15th, of October 2023. And at this new moon eclipse in Libra, we have Mercury conjunct the sun as well as the moon, as well as the south node, as you recall, is in Libra too. So this is a pretty significant uh, new moon eclipse. It's interesting, uh, initially at first blush when I looked at this, I didn't think it was all that yeah, it was kind of okay. And then I started digging into it and I thought, wow, this is a really important eclipse going on right now. And when I looked up that, you know, when I, I look at the chart for the actual new moon eclipse, uh, the first thing that came to my mind was <clears throat> a whole group of lawyers <laughs> or um, a council of some sort, um, maybe even like the Supreme Court or um, the Rural Council or something like that. But that came to my mind immediately. And so in terms of like more of a collective level, um, these types of things may play into the whole month of October. Because we look at Libra, it, it can represent a number of things, but Libra really does represent that balance, right? Um, it represents harmony. It uh, can represent um, the law. Um, diplomacy, that type of thing. So from a collective level, that could all be at play. But certainly if you've got something, say around that 21 degrees uh, of Libra, you're also going to have Mercury in the south nodes conjunct that too. So this could be a really important new start for some folks. And maybe it will literally be um, in a legal case uh, where maybe there's some favorable discussions that put everybody on a new path. Now, Mercury um, is a modulator, and so I see at this eclipse in Libra that there may be an actual increase in discussion and potential negotiations at this time. So again, for those folks that say, want to move on with their life, you know, whether it is a relationship's broken up or, or they're just wanting to move on in some way to get maybe better balance in their life, this would be a good new moon to have some favorable interactions with regards to negotiations and pulling stuff up uh, that are significant uh, to your case. 
Um, the other thing too with this um, Mercury is that Pallas Athena will also be conjuncting Mercury at this eclipse. And so this is also to do with things like uh, intellectual types of discussions and getting the information correct, that type of thing. Now, when we look at the Sabian symbol, so there's a book that you can get that's called the Sabian symbols, and it lists every degree uh, in every sign in the zodiac, and it gives you an interpretation of it. And so the Sabian symbol, symbol for um, this new moon eclipse in Libra, and you always um, round up, is 22 degrees of Libra. And it is a child giving birds a drink from a fountain. So really this translates into really giving um, sustenance, whether it's literal sustenance or something akin to that, uh, to everyone that needs it. Um, so there may be some new developments going on here in um, society. And I'm thinking in potential changes to laws, rules and regulations type thing, going back to that whole thing where I was talking about the new moon in Libra being kind of this whole group of lawyers of some sort or this council of some sort, uh, where there's new developments that happen with regards to really helping everybody here and giving to those that really, really need it. Um, and I think it's going to be something significant. I don't think this is going to be a minor thing. Because on top of everything else that I've just spoken about, we actually have a yod operating. And this yod's going to be operating all month in some way. Now, it's going to be particularly powerful at this new moon eclipse in Libra. Why? Because it forms at its base or apex, it forms um, with two planets. And one of them is uh, Uranus, the other is Neptune. And it is pointing at this new moon eclipse in Libra. And of course, we have conjunct that the south nodes. Well, the south nodes will stay there all the month of October. So that's why I'm saying that this yod will be in operation for the whole month. But more importantly, it's going to point out something important to all of us. And if you have something around, say, the 21, 22 degree mark of Libra, this could be a very important new start for you. Even a new start for those folks that need balance in their life, right? Need harmony in their life. It's not all necessarily about legal stuff, but I think there's a big collective legal thing going on here. Um, okay, so, so that's what I see that's going on here. We also have Mars trining uh, Saturn, and Saturn is at zero degrees of Pisces and some minutes. Now, zero degrees is a critical degree, and actually Saturn will go direct next month in November at zero degrees. So this also says to me that there's some important potential favorable action that can take place here uh, with regards to um, integrating, I would say, some new structure in your life. So again, this kind of goes back to everything I've just been speaking about right at the beginning of the video, um, where I just really think this new moon in Libra could be very favorable for many, many people, especially with regards to new starts, because that's zero degree critical degree is, relatively speaking, like a new start in some way, even though at this new moon eclipse, um, Saturn will still be retrograde. Now, I don't normally uh, cover moons that are in between the full moon and new moon or vice versa. But on the 22nd of October, we have the waxing gibbous moon, which is the moon just prior to the full moon. And it just happens to be at 28 degrees of Capricorn, conjunct Pluto. And so I also saw this new moon as particularly important as well. With regards to, I feel this is, is going to be a, a real pinpoint in time where we finally get it, that we finally say, okay, we can let go of all those old structures, right? So Pluto in Capricorn really represents letting go of those old things that just are archaic, that don't really uh, assist anybody anymore. And so I saw this, uh, this particular moon, just prior to the full moon, conjunct Pluto as a significant mark in the sand here. And certainly if you have something around that 28 degree mark of Capricorn, 
that, whatever that is, will be conjunct Pluto. And so for you, this may be the final steps, the final touches in whatever it is that you are transforming in your life. Can also be a time of testing. Has this worked up to now? Do I need to do some adjustments here prior to taking that jump uh, in a new direction? Now, when we look at the Sabian symbol for this moon at 28 degrees of Capricorn, it was really interesting. Um, it's a woman reading tea leaves. Um, and I thought that was really interesting, although I'm not reading tea leaves right now. Uh, I'm ostensibly, I guess, looking at potential things that are happening in the universe with the planets and stars um, as a, a future uh, as well as present type of activity, right? But really what this meant to me was that you get to see the facts, but also you get to see through the facts of what the real meaning is of the facts. So you might have to think about what I've just said here, but it's that intuition, right? It's you've got these facts presented to you and then you have to determine, and I would say this is an intuitive exercise, what do those facts really mean to me? Especially if you've got something around that 28 degree mark of Capricorn or the opposite sign, 28 degrees of Cancer, uh, as a direct hit. So we have our next full moon eclipse in Taurus, 28th of October. And uh, it is at 1.24 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time at 5 Taurus and 9 minutes. So the Sabian symbol for six degrees of uh, Taurus is a cantilever bridge across a deep gorge. And I thought this was an interesting way to kind of tie up the month with this final eclipse. And it's the final eclipse, of course, in a series of eclipses that we've had over the past, not quite two years, a year and a half or a bit more than that in both Scorpio and Taurus. So it's a finality too, it's a wrapping up. And so I really saw this as literally building a bridge, whether it's metaphorical or not, or literally a bridge across difficulties and working together, right? That's what that Sabian symbol refers to. And indeed, I believe it does refer to that final eclipse, that full moon of saying, okay, let's dig in here and work together to build a bridge so that we can all benefit from whatever it is that is a difficulty for us, either individually or collectively. Now we have the sun that will be in Scorpio at this full moon eclipse, and it'll be widely conjuncting uh, Mercury. Uh, as well as uh, Mars that are in Scorpio. So this does, even though it's a Taurus eclipse, there's a lot of Scorpio going on here too. And I would say that, especially with the Mercury and the Mars in Scorpio and the Sun, this will be some kind of illumination of probably secrets. Uh, could be just hidden information that's that's not been available to you. So we're looking at around the six degree mark of Scorpio, for the Scorpio uh, planets that we're talking about here, right? And so that's the sun, which is a luminary, that is Mercury, and that is Mars. And so there's some kind of favorable energy that's gonna be kicked off here with regards to, boom, you all of a sudden see the light. You're all of a sudden able to take some action here. Uh, with regards to things I believe that were hidden. It can also be psychological too, I mean, Certainly Scorpio is very much a psychological type sign, uh, but I think this is an illumination of some facts that were hidden, uh, whether they were hidden intentionally or not. We also have the moon will be conjuncting Jupiter. Um, now the moon, if we look at it from a standpoint of um, a collective level, represents the people. And so we get this Jupiter expanding the moon basically saying um, there's going to be a lot more notice put to the people here. Now, Jupiter, generally speaking, we look at that as representing foreign people, foreign lands. So I think there's gonna be a big focus here um, on people 
in foreign lands uh, that are going to be bringing a lot of stuff up to the surface here, right? Let's go back to the fact that this is a full moon in Taurus, bringing things to light. And with Jupiter on top of that, it really expands and brings things to light. But especially with regards, I feel, to uh, foreign lands, foreign people, but it could also be to philosophies as well, right? Uh, groups that um, have a certain philosophy, uh, for some reason, may be brought to light for us to see at this full moon eclipse. Okay, so when we look at November, um, we will have Saturn going direct at zero degrees. And as I mentioned, that's a critical degree. I'll talk more about that in my video for November. We'll have a new moon in Scorpio. So Scorpio, you got a new start in November. And then we have a full moon in Gemini. All right, let's move on now to the signs and or ascendants. So Libra, we're going to start off with you because Libra, you have a new moon eclipse in your sign. So this should be pretty significant for you. Now for anything to really show up for you, Libra, we're really looking at the, you know, 21, 22 degree of Libra to be most affected. Otherwise, a lot of times these things go by and, and don't forget a lot of times these things are internal, internal things to us. So when we look at Libra, we're looking at balance and harmony, right? We could also be looking at balance and harmony in our relationships or our friendships, diplomacy, that type of thing, um, even just social type things as well. So for some Librans, there may be some significant thing that happens here with regards to um, these areas of life. Now, you've got this yod. So if you do have something around this, this yod points at the south nodes for you, Libra. So I would say that generally speaking, um, this new moon will require you or ask of you to let go of something. And how could that play out? Well, let's just say that for some folks, they're involved in a new relationship. Well, this could just be with the south nodes being activated that you let go of your single status and you take on this other status of actually being as a couple together at the new moon. After all, the new moon eclipse, Libra, is in your first house of you. And the first house is all about you, everything around you and inside you. Um, so really take advantage of this new moon to, um, yeah, to really see if there's something that you need to let go of um, that's not working for you. And it could also play out for some Librans where uh, maybe you are giving too much in whatever it is that you're doing. Maybe there's not enough harmony or balance and you need to start looking carefully at how you can balance and harmonize your uh, life uh, so that it serves you better, right? Now that full moon in Taurus is going to be in your eighth house. So the eighth house is, is a money house, generally speaking. It's also a psychological house, but it's also about a deepening of a relationship. So for some Librans, that whole new moon eclipse could usher in this new relationship, say. And then that full moon comes around and you realize that this is maybe more serious than you think. And you go to maybe the next level with this person but it can also bring in a focus with finances. So it might be for some folks that they have this new relationship and they decide they've got to start sharing their you know, finances together, their shared resources together. But it could also be that um, whatever new beginning you started brings um, this aha moment or culmination of some sort with regards to how you have been operating psychologically. Now, it is an eclipse uh, for that full moon too, right? So you've got two eclipses happening here, um, one in your money sector and then one all about you. So there could just be some culmination of money here. Maybe you decide to cash in uh, some of your investments at this time or change up, let go maybe of some of the way you're investing. Um, and this eclipse 
illuminate some things for you where you maybe need to stop something and maybe start something with regards to your finances, especially finances that you're investing in or saving in or sharing with other people. Take care, Libra. Okay, everyone, that kind of wraps up things. I hope I've given you some, some information that is of use to you. As always, you um, are the, the captain of your ship. You decide which way you want to steer your life. I'm just giving you some information that I hope will help, um, just help you make those decisions. But it is your decision, whatever you decide to do. This is an action-packed month with these two eclipses. Um, but I see them really working out well, as long as you take, you know, take that high road of Libra type things, seek harmony, seek fairness, um, um, and balance. That's, to me, that's the overriding energy for this October, because we've got this big stamp of Venus, right? And Venus is sweet. Maybe that little adage of, you know, a little bit of honey is a little bit better than uh, vinegar is something to take seriously in this month of October. Well, I wish you lots of sweetness. <laughs> take care of yourself, everybody. Um, we will be in touch when I do my November 2023 video. Bye for now. Sending you lots of love.